On this week's joint of the week, we're gonna do the inlaid dovetail. We're gonna use the second best wood combination besides maple and walnut, wangi and zebra wood. So it should come out really cool. Zebra wood's kind of a pain in the butt to work with, but we're gonna be careful. And we got a new saw, so let's get to it. Okay, our first step is gonna be layout. And I purposely left our wangi thicker here because since we're doing inlaid, I want some more room to be able to maneuver when it's time to do the second set. So we need to figure out how deep our first set's gonna go on our wangi. And you know, you don't wanna go so deep that you bust through that back wall when you're chopping out your pins, but you wanna give yourself some room. So we're gonna go, I think that's about eighth an inch. Yeah, right about an eighth. So then we're gonna go ahead and mark that on our tail board and that's gonna be the depth. And with our tails, we're gonna cut the side. So we need to go all the way around. So we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and mark that out here from the inside of your board cause that's gonna be the depth that you're going. This line isn't exactly necessary because you can mark it when you're doing your pins, but I like to do it because then that lets me know if anything's wrong when I go to cut these out. And then the last thing to do is mark the depth of your zebra wood onto your wangi. And the easy way to do that is to take your marking gauge, just like that, lock her down. And by the way, I have this linked in the description at all times in all my videos. This is like the greatest marking gauge on the planet. It's only like 25 bucks too, and it just kicks butt. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that out on our wangi. And that's gonna let us to know how deep to go with our half blinds. We're just gonna do that on one side. So now we need to figure out the spacing of our tails. For marking these out, what we wanna do is we're gonna burn an eighth of an inch on each side. Uh, I left this, I like to cut, when I'm doing dovetails, I like to cut my boards at exact measurements. So this one I did four and a half, for example. And that allows me to do a little bit easier math when I'm marking them out. The other way to do it is with a pair of dividers, uh, but for half blinds, I like to actually pick the measurements that I lay them out. So we're gonna burn an eighth and we're gonna go right at one and an eighth from each side. I'm only gonna go over a 16th cause we like those thin pins, baby. And then to get our middle one, we're just gonna go right in the middle of those two. That puts me over exactly a 16th from the middle of the board. And we're gonna go a 16th from there. There we go. Now the last thing to do is just to mark the eighth inch in that we burned. Okay, so now it's time to cut our tails. And I have a great video. It's called A Comprehensive Guide to Cutting Dovetails. It has every tip and trick I know. It'll be linked right up here in the top right hand corner. And I also have done regular half blind dovetails. So I'll link that as well in the corner and they'll also be linked down in the description. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and cut these and chop out our waist, and then I'll check back in with you when it's time to lay these out on our pin board. So we're gonna mark these out and we're gonna use our fancy dovetail alignment board. I have CNC made dovetail alignment boards available on my website. And I just realized this is the exact same wood that we're using, which looks freaking awesome. So um, when you do this, you're gonna wanna make sure that your depth line on the end grain is towards you. And you're just gonna put that in your vise up against the fence face side out, and you're just gonna make sure that those are touching and that they are against the fence. And there you go. What's great about these dovetail alignment boards is if you slip, you can go right back where you were. So they're super repeatable. And as long as you get these tails in there right, the rest of this doesn't matter on this step because you're gonna end up flush trimming this off anyways. We're going to mark those out on there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear out the waist using a fixed base router. I'm using this uh, quarter inch spiral upcut bit from Bits Bits. There's a 15% off discount code in the description. We're gonna set it right to our depth line. I mean, right on it. We're not gonna 
leave anything, maybe a smidge just in case. But we're gonna go right to there, lock it in, and then we're gonna use this. We're gonna make sure that it stays flat and we're gonna just clear out our waste. And if you have trouble seeing your lines, darken them up with, you can use chalk or white pencil or something like that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and clear out most of this. So one of my favorite parts about cutting half blind dovetails is it's because you're cutting into end grain, it's so easy. You can remove a lot of waste at once with your chisel and you can just put it right in your line and go down. And because it's end grain, it, it's pretty easy. And only this face matters. So even if you undercut it in here, you're still at no risk of having gaps in your dovetails. So let's go ahead and get these cut out here. Okay, so just to finish this up, I've got everything super cleaned out. I'm just slightly undercutting the insides of my pins so nothing hangs this up when I put glue on it. And then I put an extra board behind this because this wall is so thin, we don't want to blast through it. I loved that router. That was like the coolest. It gets everything perfectly flat right at the right level so you have a reference surface for your chisel. I did get a little cocky right here and went over by maybe a 1 64th, but I don't even think you'll be able to see it once there's glue in there, but I felt like a doofus. So just undercutting these slightly and we're gonna glue it up here and wait for that to dry uh, and then we'll get into our next step. Okay, now that this is glued up and dried, and I let this sit overnight, because when you're doing inlay on dovetails, it really helps if the glue is just completely dried. What we're gonna do is flush trim the zebra wood board, flush up the end, you just, it's easier, you don't like have to right now, but it's just easier if you flush that up and make sure that the back of your board, once you flush trim, is completely flat. So what we're gonna do is flush trim it, sand it, make sure everything's still square and true and all that good stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and take our second board and we're going to cut a rabbit into it. And what it's going to do is hide the interior of the dovetails because when you cut multiple sets, you know, you can get some funky looking things on the inside. And because this board is thicker than the zebra wood, if we just cut our half blinds like we did on this one, we're going to end up going way below the zebra wood and then you get some potential tear out problems and all of that. It also makes it a little bit easier if you take some weight out of this for cutting this joinery. So, flush trim, grab it, and I'll check back in with you for layout. Okay, so now is where we get to decide how thick we want our inlay to be. Now, I'm gonna match this line here. So that was an eighth, so I'm gonna go an eighth in, so that's a quarter. So you're gonna cut your rabbit a quarter inch along the length of your board, quarter inch in, and then you're gonna also decide your depth. We're gonna go 5 sixteenths down. So your rabbit's gonna be a quarter inch in this way, and it's gonna be up to 5 sixteenths from the top. Okay, so now we need to do our layout. And as you can see, I've put both boards in the vise with their faces, so the outside faces facing each other. And this makes this very easy for layout. So what you wanna do, because we know that our inlay is gonna be an eighth inch up here, we want it to be an eighth inch in here. So what we're gonna do is simply just measure over an eighth from each one. So we're just gonna take a ruler here, slide our square over. Take our marking knife and you can just strike a line. Try not to get your other board like I just did, but no problem, nothing a little sand it won't fix. <laughs> Don't mark your other board, Jonathan. Okay, and we're just gonna repeat that process and then cut them out like we would normally. The great thing about the rabbit 
is it's a perfect depth stop so we know exactly where to stop. I forgot to put my marking gauge line on the other side, but I'm gonna do that now. And uh, we'll go ahead and cut these out. Okay, we now have our tails marked out. And you noticed I went all the way around the tail. You could just as easily do this with a marking gauge. In fact, I think I'm gonna come back and do it. But we also have to mark the depth. So I'm just gonna strike a line all the way down. And we're gonna use the same trick with the router here. I'm not gonna get as cocky as last time, but we're gonna use it. And then I'm going to go ahead, we can take our marking gauge, put it right there. Just, I'm just gonna check, make sure they all line up. And I'm gonna just make that line a little bit deeper across just where I marked it out before, because that's the only place we're gonna need it. And that'll help us a little bit with our chisel. And there we go, let's set up our router, get this cleared out. We're gonna use some chisels and then get it put together. Okay, so we're gonna glue this up. And one thing to know if you're doing this is that when you're cutting this set of tails, your inlay is now long grain facing this way instead of cutting into end grain. So you have to go really slow, otherwise you can really, it can get away from you. Now I had a little piece tear out right here and it's just the very top tore out. And just remember guys, good woodworking, it's not about being perfect, it's about knowing how to fix your mistakes. And so what we're gonna do is after glue up here, I've got just a piece that I chiseled off there that is the same grain running the same way. And I'm just gonna take it and glue it in there uh, with some of the glue and we're gonna be just fine. So uh, let's get this thing glued up, sanded and lacquered to see what it looks like. Okay guys, well, it looks pretty cool. Um, I, I think it, it came out great, but honestly, I think with most of my inlaid dovetails, I've had the line that goes around. So I think, you know, that's what Joint of the Week's about. It's about experimenting and it's about figuring out new ways to do things and practicing the skills that make you a better woodworker. So I think next week we're gonna redo this and we're gonna get the uh, lines to go around here. What I would have done differently is cut a rabbit in the first Wangby board that I did originally with the zebra wood. And that would have made these lines go all the way around. I think it's a really cool look though and you may like this a lot, uh, but I, I think we can make it better. So I think next week we're gonna do a joint of the week redemption and we're gonna improve on this. So thanks for watching guys. Stay safe in the shop and have a wonderful day.